In this tutorial, we're going to talk about a very interesting and important topic in Matplotlib called the pick event. This event is one of the many events available to us in Matplotlib, but I decided to make a whole video just on this event because of how important it was. Okay? And we have a whole video on event handling, by the way. If you want to check that out, you can. If you have never done event handling before, it will be pretty useful for you. Okay? Otherwise, we will discuss the basic concepts in this video as well. Okay, so don't worry. Now let's continue. What makes the pick event so special? Well, I won't explain what it does right now. You'll understand that as we continue, but I will tell you that it is a way of actually interacting with our plot, actually interacting with the objects, the data that we plot onto our matplotlib window. Okay, so with that in mind, let's continue. I'm going to create a simple scatter plot. I'm going to use NumPy to generate some random data, 10 values for the X and 10 values for the Y. That's going to make us 10 plots in total, 10 individual dots. Okay. And if I run this, we should see our output. All right, cool. Now let's connect the picker event to our figure object. And like always, We'll do figure.canvas.mpl underscore connect. And the first parameter is the name of the event. And the second parameter is the name of the function that we wish to call whenever the event is triggered. And we're going to define this function, okay, which automatically receives an event object. And for now, we'll just print out this event object, okay. But there is still one problem, okay. But before I explain that problem, let's discuss what the pick event is. Okay, it's about time we talked about that. So the pick event is automatically generated whenever we interact with an artist object. What is an artist object though? Well, it's something that we draw to our window. For example, these dots over here, these are an artist object. It's something that we've drawn to the window. This applies to pretty much anything. A line that you've drawn, a bar in a bar chart, these are, these are all artist objects, okay? And whenever we click on these, then the event is generated. But even though I have currently connected the event, if I click on one of these, nothing is going to happen. And the reason for that is you actually need to enable the picker parameter, okay? Because I think for performance reasons or something, this is disabled by default, okay? So if I run this now, and if I click on one of these, it's going to generate the event, as we can see here in the terminal, okay? If I click anywhere else, like I am right now, nothing is going to happen. Only when I actually click on one of these does the event trigger, okay? And there's one very handy parameter that we actually get called the pick radius. And this actually creates a sort of radius around the artist object. So let's say our artist object is really small and we want to give the person some leniency when clicking on it. So if I pass in a picker radius of 10 and I'm going to click very close to the artist object, but not on the artist object. So if I click on it, the event is still going to be generated. Okay because I have enabled a small radius around the object, which we can select it. Okay. Don't go too crazy with this. Okay. Otherwise, if two points are close together, then their radiuses might start to overlap or something and that could cause problems. Okay. So just be a little bit careful with that. Okay. Don't go too extreme. A value of five or 10 is pretty good. Okay. Anyways, let's see how we can further use the picker event. Okay, so what we can do is find out where exactly did this event occur. This is some useful information after all. So what we can do is uh, artist is equal to event dot artist. Okay, and we can now print out artist dot get x data. And we can do the same for the y. I just hope I'm rem remembering this correctly. This part always confuses me a bit. I just re refer to my cheat sheet when I need to do that. 
Uh, nope. So I figured out the problem. Earlier on my website, I was using plot and I would just change the marker style, the line style, to an O. So this gives us the same scatter plot effect and X data and Y data works. Okay, but what is this? Why am I getting 10 values? Why am I getting so many? I didn't, you know, click on 10. I just clicked on one, right? So there's a problem here. Let me just change this back to scatter though. Okay, you can actually use uh, get offsets. Okay, but even with this function, we'll get the same problem. Watch. If I click on one of these, we get 10 values, okay, 10 pairs of X and Y values. Why is this so? Well, this is because we actually plotted just one artist object. Okay, this is one function call. So all of these 10 are linked to each other. If I click on one of them, it basically treats it as all of them were clicked. And that's why all of their values get printed out. One easy way of re resolving this problem is to do this. Plot them all individually, okay? If you have an array, just iterate over it and plot them one by one, okay? So if I just change this a bit, they're now gonna be treated as individual objects, okay? So if I click on this one, this time we only get one print statement. All right, you see that it's only printing out the value of the one we're clicking on. So if I click on this one, which is somewhere around 0 0.1 on the X axis and 0 0.2 on the Y, we can see that over here, reflected over here as well, All right? Cool. So what else can we do? Well, we can do something very interesting where we actually change the object itself. Right now, we're just interacting with it in a very basic sense. We're just you know, clicking on the object, right? We aren't really doing anything besides that. So let's actually change something about the object, like the color, for example. And what I'll do first is actually make all the colors the same. Okay, color is equal to blue. And now the colors are all the same. All right, cool. Now what we'll do here to change the color is define, in, uh, define a dictionary called props and over here I'll put color is equal to red. Okay, this is a dictionary of values. Okay, and we're gonna update this. We'll update our artist object with this dictionary. For this, we need to make one more import. Okay, from matplotlib.artist import artist. Okay, now we're gonna do artist, this artist class dot update. And the first parameter is gonna be the artist that we wish to update. Okay, the second parameter is the props by which we want to update it. So our props are gonna change the color to red. And if our artist object has this prop, then it's gonna update it with the value red, okay? And after this, we need to do plt.draw because we're making changes, okay? We're changing the graph, we're changing the plot. So we need to call plt.draw, which is gonna update, redraw, re-render our graph, okay? So if I run this now, and there we go. If I click on this, the color has now changed to red. Okay, cool, right? Yeah, that's pretty great. Now let's just make this a bit more fancy. What we can do is create a selected point. Okay, just trying to make this a more real life scenario. Okay, so we'll say that if selected point is equal to none, okay, if there's no selected point currently, what we'll do is selected point is equal to event artist, okay, and then we're gonna update the selected point with our props. But if there is already a selected point, what we'll first do, hold on, change this to blue, okay? If there's already a selected object, we're first gonna change the selected point back to blue, okay? And then we'll make a new point 
and change its color to red. Now, there's a more efficient way of writing this code. I realized I made this in a very redundant way, uh, but just don't mind me. Anyways, so if I run this, watch what's going to happen. Oh, wait, hold on. I forgot one thing. Uh, we never made it over here. If there is already a selected point, okay, we need to update the value of selected point. Right? And we didn't change that to new point either. Now, selected point is now the new point. Okay? Here we go. Now, watch this. If I click on this, if it, whoa, what's wrong with you? Oh, of course. Make this global selected point. All right? Now, if I click on one of these, it's going to turn red. But if I click on another one, that one is going to be turned back to blue, and then this one will be turned red. So this is a pretty efficient system of being able to select only one artist, okay, out of all the artists currently plotted, okay? Now, you can take this a lot further. You can even do stuff like highlighting lines, okay? A line consists of two points, so you need to select both points, okay? And only then can you, like, highlight, highlight the line or something. So just keep that in mind. There's a lot of interesting things you can do with this event. Okay, and maybe we'll make another video or two on this. So in order to keep updated with those, do subscribe to the channel. Okay, so you don't miss any of those future updates. And yeah, we'll end the video right here. We've already discussed what we wanted to, how we can gain the event artist, and then we can make changes to that artist, how we can obtain the coordinates of that artist, how we can, you know, use the picker radius, and yeah, how to use the pick event in general. We've discussed all of that. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If there's something else you want to see, do let me know in the comment section below. Leave a like, leave a comment. And yeah, see you guys in a later video. Bye then.